Hello, I have pants on this week. I saw that. <laughs> but he rolled them up. It was really hot in here. I was about to ask. I was like, I see knees. I didn't see knees before. <laughs> and and if she's ready. <laughs> Adam, Di- Diana? I thought I had a minute. I thought, like, you didn't sound ready. <laughs> I never sound ready. That's my charm. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I apologize. Do you? I mean, this is just how we, we do, right? At this point. Dad, that was such a big <laughs> yawn. It was like a cartoon <laughs> character, like dad <laughs> yawn. <laughs> that was yeah. fantastic. So, so what's going what? on? A celebration coming up. Yeah, we're very excited, guys. We uh, just figured out like, I don't know, five minutes ago <laughs> what we're going to do for our podcast anniversary, our podiversary uh, in May. So we are going to do a live show on Tuesday, May 25th at 8 p.m. We will be live on YouTube, maybe Facebook if Michael figures out how to do that. Mm. Maybe not. He, he, he's, he's giving me a, the stink mm. eye on that one. I'll work on it. I will. I <laughs> uh, live on YouTube. We're going to record our anniversary episode that releases on May 31st uh, live with everyone watching. Uh, again, Tuesday, May 25th, mark your calendars, 8 p.m. You guys can come in and chat with us on the live feed and, uh, yeah, we'll have a good time. I think maybe we'll do an after party after it on Zoom. We talked about that too. Uh, that part and those details will follow on social media. Yes. Oh yeah. That's a good idea. Have a couple of drinks and yeah, yeah. You know, just everybody. cheers after we finish the show and say thank you to everyone who's listened to us for a year. I can take off a third day that week after I oh, drink gosh. all night. <laughs> as, as you should. As I should. <laughs> I, we could just celebrate that I made it a year because like every like three months, I'm like, I'm quitting. I just don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> you, you, I'm yeah. like, it, the little bit of a work I do, I just cannot handle it anymore. Can, cannot be bothered for this amount. Can, for the amount of fame. Oh my gosh. I cannot. Be the amount of fame. <gasps> oh God. So yeah, we're excited. Excited. That'll be a lot of fun. I'm so excited. So so excited. So talking motivation. What are we running for this week? Well, I'll go first. Go. Let's hear. <laughs> we got to hear about your uh, your week here. Your science. I, I am running for science and summer concerts. I got my second vaccine uh, three days ago, and it was the Moderna. Um, Please go get vaccinated. But I had kind of bad symptoms and side effects afterwards. Mm. Like the next morning, I felt hungover. Then I had headaches. Then I had just aches and kind of just felt nasty. Yeah. And that was around for like two days. This morning, I got up and, and forced myself to go to the pool and I swam. And really, after that workout, I started feeling completely fine. So I feel fine now. Yeah. So I think it's I think it's moved out. But like, that was rough. That being said, I would 100% do it again because mm-hmm. it's amazing that we have this vaccine. And like I said, um, I'm also running for summer concerts because like a lot of the local venues are advertising dates for concerts sort of like mid su- mid to late summer and I'm a huge concert guy so I'm going to go to all of them. Nice. <laughs> nice. I I cannot wait. I cannot wait to ha- like I love to have something like that to look forward to. So that's yeah. what I'm running for. Yeah. Well, cool. I um I got my second shot too and I was fine. Um but I had Pfizer and I was really worried because I'm like if you could I don't know. 
put a characteristic on both of us. I would be the sickly one. Like <laughs> I get sick every time we travel, but I, that's... I always have a cold. So I'm like, the vaccine is going to kill me but the... because I'm so sickly. <laughs> but the, the thing is that they say the people with better immune systems are the ones who are having the more side effects. So but I feel if like Tom, my, uh, I guess that's true. if Tom has a better immune system and doesn't get as sick as often, then, oh, I guess that makes then sense. his immune system would be the one that has the stronger immune response. That's what I've read anyway, because uh, I, I had a I had a pretty strong reaction to Pfizer. I had the Pfizer one and I had a pretty strong reaction yeah, to that. Like the next day I, I woke up and I felt like I guess like Tom said, the best way you could describe it is I felt kind of hung over. Like I had a little yeah. bit of a headache and was like, Ugh. but I don't know if that was like just like it was morning mm. or if I. <laughs> yeah, no, I if, mean. But I felt fine later in the day. Like I went to Orange Theory that oh, afternoon wow. yeah. and like, like I went the morning I got my shot. And so like, I didn't miss a day. So yeah. I went the next day. I I canceled my morning class just in case I woke up and felt like garbage and then made the the appointment for the class at like 530 oh. yeah. and went. And you were and, fine. And I was fine. I got like a crap ton of splat points. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, so. I, um, I had a fever and like, nauseousness were, i mean yeah, i was like really like i was sick sick yeah. so i guess it just depends because michael was really tired but other than really tired that was about it yeah he didn't, just a little yeah. tired yeah so everyone's different but yay for all four of us being vaccinated yay, yay. i think um we can blame my giant yawn on the vaccine there let's we do go. that <laughs> i'm just so tired michael tried to do that for like two weeks he's like i think that this i'm still tired from the vaccine i'm like it's been a week and a half i think oh you're fine. my god <laughs> also there might there might have been a little bit of a placebo effect because like i'm also a big baby so, <laughs> so any slight ache and pain i'm like oh this is it this is, i see the light i'm going down but but now I feel good. Well, I'm glad you got vaccinated, Diana, because I see that you're running for something special. Oh, yeah. We're going on vacation, which apparently we didn't tell you guys. <laughs> I, I didn't realize we were keeping it a secret, but I guess we kind of were. So, um, yeah, we're going to Hawaii and we're going to Alani. And yes. where else are we going? And then we're going to Kauai. Mm. And and unlike you guys, I, um, I'm not running on the beach during this vacation. I'm sitting on the beach. Well, we drinking. did that as well. I mean, we sat and well, drank I, on I'm the beach still, too. I'm not doing it. I'm not running. So <laughs> I'm, I'm running now um, so that I don't have to when yeah. I'm there. We're going to do a lot of outdoor activities. We're going to do some hiking. Yeah. There's that's a lot still, of great hiking. I was going to say, yeah. that's still pretty ac- I mean, that's especially because yeah. that's like volcano-y and rocky and hilly and mountain-y. Yep. <laughs> but I've got like I've got like a limit All the of ease. things I'm going to do. Like it's... It's going to be a lot of... Are you going to eat a lot of pineapple? I'm going to eat all the pineapple. I think we're going to go to Dole. I was just going to ask if you were going to go to the, the Dole farm and eat and pineapple. Actually, shout out to... I don't know if this person listens, but Zero Octane... Chris. Chris yes. um, has been posting... Apparently, they're in Alani and Hawaii right now, and... They they follow our podcast or yeah he's their... uh from Team Shenanigans actually old okay. school Team Shenanigans yep but like I'm watching their pictures and I'm like we're doing that next week yeah and it's getting me real that's real how jazz. I found out you were that's going awesome. to Hawaii <laughs> <laughs> well this is this is still kind of a time when you don't want to overly advertise everything you do listen I get it we do and we just thought it was funny because we looked at each other we're like huh. did you know they were going to Hawaii <laughs> no. And uh, Michael, what are you running for? Um, for, to get my buns really tight. <laughs> the juicy bo- bottoms that uh, Diana yeah. asked you about last week. Yep, Aww. running milky, up the hills. Milky thighs. <laughs> <laughs> I got my. I, they're covered this week. <laughs> Only calves this week. <laughs> milky thighs and <laughs> buns. Yeah, tight buns. Yeah, lots sh- of elevation. I should have wore a thong for the show. Gosh. I don't even. I I got no words. I also have nothing on the on the on the show notes about what I'm running for because I um, apparently am not running for anything. No, I mean I I mean I am running for training. I guess uh, which we'll talk about when we talk about training. I I'm actually like training, which is weird. 
It's weird. So I guess I'm so. running for it. training. Yeah, it's been so long. Yeah, yeah, and I actually have like a goal at the end like of it all. There is a reason why I'm doing it. So I keep having to go out there and do it because there's a reason that I have to. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it's funny. Our our little running group they um they canceled all the races everyone was training for in May. So the coach is like putting together her own race and okay. like, calling it like the Megan Half Marathon. Um. So like everyone's like, I guess we'll just do that. And so yeah. that like <laughs> yeah, that at least still gives them something yeah. that they yeah are... <laughs> because all of the races that we registered in May got pushed to at least July. So. Yeah. Well, so I guess that's what I'm running for. I'm running for actual training. Actual that's real life idea. training. So. It's awful. Yeah. yeah. Like, it's nice when you can get up and run because you can just run and you feel like running. Not that anyone yeah. really feels like it. It is different when you have to. Yeah, I think that's that, part of it. I think that's why I say it, said it the way that I did. Because, like, today I didn't really want to go do the hills that we did uh where we only walked them like it was like really like we were doing like 19 minute hill repeats like it wasn't anything uh but it was because we needed the elevation and we needed mm -hmm. time on our feet it wasn't because i really wanted to go drive 25 minutes to the hill <laughs> walk up a hill and walk up the hill <laughs> like 20 times and back down like no, who wants to do that not me <laughs> Oh my god. It was so funny that um that day you guys did the the flat run. I was laughing because I did more elevation at Orange Theory that day because it was like a hill day. And I was like, oh my God. Like, yeah. yeah, that was dead flat. Yeah, there's like yeah, yeah oh there's god. there's not not even a there wasn't even a ramp was a, to yeah, be found. A, since it's a the towpath, path. yeah, yeah, yeah canal yeah. towpath. It's so yeah. funny. I was like, oh my gosh, I have like eight times the amount of elevation they have. Because <laughs> it was like an, I guess Everest is going on. So I just happened uh, to go to a class that was like yep. an Everest training day. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you had to like keep at your base pace. Yeah. And then every, I forget however long it was, but every whatever, you went up, you, you were at like a two and then you went to a four and then okay. you went to a six and you went all the way up. And then you did like a one or two minute walk in the middle. It was a few days ago, so now I don't remember. But then you started at the high one and then worked okay. your way back down. Yeah, so like ladders. It, it sucked. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was so bad. It was yeah. so bad. Yeah, I do. La I've done speed ladders. I've never done um, elevation yeah, ladders. Yeah, that's usually what I do. And that's what yeah. we did today. At okay. Orange there, we did speed ladders and that's what i'm used to like whenever i go yeah. do speed work on the treadmill i do ladders although i when we used to do the i used to go to um a group run that would you do the bridge down in ocean city new jersey and you would do like i guess it's sort of like a ladder then because you would go like a quarter way up the bridge back down two times and then go halfway up the bridge two times and oh, then go yeah. all the way up the bridge two times and then like do it backwards so i guess that's like a ladder that's right yeah, I think it is. Yeah, I think that counts. Okay, so I lied. I have done that. <laughs> a hill ladder. Anyway, nice. what uh, has our our people been up to? And now it's time for our will run for goal getters. Congrats on making your goals, you getters. So uh, our goal getters, we got uh, Jennifer Fink. She PR'd the Hoagie Eye Hog. Sorry. To me, I see that and I see Hoagie. <laughs> the Haga. That's from Philly. That's, that's I such was a like, Philly is that thing. Philly coming out? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. yeah. totally Philly. The, uh, she PR'd the Haga Eye Half Marathon. A th 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 blah, blah, three hour and 55 seconds. Yeah. That's awesome. That's she was, awesome. I know she was pushing for so the sub three. So close to sub three. But did you see the, uh, the, her post? I mean, she was running in like rain yeah. the whole time. Yeah. Like it, the conditions were terrible. She was out there with her friend, um, Maria Miller. Yeah. Who also listens yep. to, I think she listens to our podcast. Maria, if you listen to our podcast, uh, let, us let us know. Uh, <laughs> uh, Robert, our friend Robert from Pineland Striders, uh, did the Heiner 50K. Which is a uh, pretty uh, prominent race in uh, like central PA has 6,500 feet of climbing. Wow! And uh, he did. He had a pretty good time. He was like a, right around nine hours. It was a sub nine. Sub nine. Yeah. Uh, which is pretty good for that. Also, uh, Swan runs far. Who's uh, John? He also did the Heiner 50K. Felt pretty good the whole time too, even after he finished. Uh, you you know you missed that. I... Sorry. 
Oh, go ahead. What I miss? You missed that Robert uh, was oh, on his I way did. to the. He has only one more. He was doing the uh, ultra a month. Uh, ultra a month That's from right. January right. to uh, to May, and he's got one more left. One he's more got his go. longest distance to go, fifty miles in May. What's nine, he doing? Ninety five hundred feet of elevation. The one what? that we looked at in New York. Uh, oh wow! The same weekend that Cowbone, the one that we're doing. Oh yeah, yeah, is, yeah, yeah. We looked yeah. at the one in New York, but we weren't sure because of covid restrictions yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. wow that's gonna be a tough one Good yeah for him that's crazy yeah that's anyway what were you gonna say diana oh i was gonna um say that feeling good the whole time i think is even better yeah. than a pr yeah like to not feel like trash when you're done yeah it's like <laughs> i don't know like sometimes that's better than a pr and yeah, I, I just agree. love that yeah. like yeah if you so complete yeah. uh, like a goal race and feel good after you're done yeah that's yeah. like that's like a bonus yeah, yeah. yeah. agreed 100%. uh jessica grand in two weeks she is doing the gasparilla stella solstice challenge virtually in person in tampa wow. uh, she's doing 8k 15k but since it's not officially in person she's going to run the 8k and then and then what? stand up Sup, stand yeah. up paddle oh. Oh, she's going to sup the 15k. See that? I don't know what sup means. Yeah, <laughs> it is up. um elliptico. It is su- no, it's like no, it's a stand uh, it's up paddle board. So you do it in oh, the water. Oh, stand up paddle, yeah. not pedal. Okay, paddle. Wow, that's a uh, that's hard. A bunch of my friends did yeah. it and invited me, and I was afraid to do it, so I didn't. No, d- <laughs> my, I told like we were talking about because she posted this on Facebook, so then I commented that. I've done it once and we did like a women's leadership mm-hmm. retreat at work where we did like yoga and then talked about girl power and then went out <laughs> on these paddle boards. It was, it was a very nice day. Um, <laughs> but like I was, so I should have just jumped in the water and gotten it over with because mm-hmm. my, I was standing up and my whole body was shaking so much. Oh my like, God. Everything hurt the next day. Uh, oh, like, just I from was that. Stiff that as a yeah. board and just like, just, shaking like my whole body shaking oh the whole my God. time i was like everything yeah <laughs> i was invited a few times to go and i just uh i'm afraid that i'd be on my knees the whole time and or uh fall in the water and so i just haven't done it yeah like i said i, I think you just have to get it over with because if i had just gotten on the board and then jumped in and then gotten on the board yeah i would have been i don't think i would have been as nervous because then i would have just been like well i'm already wet i've yeah. already i've already been in <laughs> yeah you know? exactly you wouldn't have yeah you wouldn't have been so like hesitant like, about falling out. in yeah, yeah. well yeah. anyway good luck jessica <laughs> yes yeah, so now I, now i know what sup means now you know what sup means i also um and tom will laugh at this this woman we used to work with christine um <laughs> lost control <laughs> went right into a dock and had to oh go my god <laughs> she's god. like i can't Aww. stop she crashed and into like, a no dock. No one could help her. Like, no one could help her. Oh my god! Like, that that would be me. That <laughs> would be me. That, that's why I don't do oh, these things. Oh man! Also, I'm afraid of drowning in the water. So that's, that's probably also a problem. Oh gosh! Oh gosh! Lil E Mo. <laughs> Lil E Mo. <laughs> Lil She ran the uh, Kentucky Derby half and got an eight minute PR with a time of two o one. Uh, she pushed That's pretty awesome. hard. Yeah, she was sore afterwards. She said and pushed pretty hard. Uh, Greg, he was up in uh, Georgia doing some. He was in Georgia, right? Yep. That's where it was. The mm-hmm. Helen Back Marathon uh, trail race. Uh, it was rainy and cold uh, with a bunch of climbing. He's getting ready for, I believe, the Bryce Canyon. Yes, like fifty mile. I just, or something. I, I enjoyed that Greg put his entire goal getter thing in emojis. Oh, did 100%. he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's so amazing. I responded with him in, in emojis as oh, well. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, uh, so God. Good. His goal is looking like a little snack. He is yeah. just working on it. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. <laughs> uh, Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Amy said that their goal this week was to create a tribute to Jeff Galloway, who suffered a heart attack. Actually, I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, Jeff Galloway who I know Tom used his method and talked about how he was in his ear the whole time. And his first... contribute it to that episode. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, so 
anyway, yeah. So he had a heart attack. He had uh, like five stints put in and a yeah, pacemaker. Like that, yeah. yeah. So wow. um, they did a little tribute to him on their last episode uh, because he's their coach and they really appreciate all that they that he's done for them. So if you haven't listened to that and you're if you you're into Jeff Galloway, go uh, check yeah. out their episode. Yeah, like a Galloway runner, Disney runner. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's um he's just done so much to make running accessible for everyone. Yeah, mm-hmm. accessible. Yeah. Like I I saw this article um I think it was today just Podium giving runner? him credit. Yeah, just for giving him credit for making running accessible to If I didn't start with the Galloway method, I wouldn't have started running was it by podium? i would have been too scared was it the one that was by podium runner is that ian Sharman? because i actually thought that was a very interesting article is that who that was I, I, it's very familiar podium runner i couldn't think of that's his Podi- podcast podiumrunner.com yeah. okay so then it was yeah. ian Sharman. um I, it was an interesting article because i don't think i knew as much about jeff galloway um and what he's done for the running community he actually was one mm-hmm. of the people who started he was the first person to start a running store Oh, wow. Um, he was the, I mean, he's an, obviously an Olympian yeah, and, yeah. and all that. Um, he started uh, the like, marathon in Georgia, in Atlanta. Yeah. And then mm-hmm. um, women, he like was an advocate for women in, in marathoning. So uh, yeah. there's like that article was just like an amazing tribute to what he's done. And, and a lot of things that I don't think that I realized what he's contributed to the running community and what he's done to be beyond the Galloway method itself. Yep. Uh, all the things he's done. Mm. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. Cool. Tom so. like totally fanboyed out when he met him. I really did. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he basically got me to, got me the confidence to run a half marathon. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And then, yeah. then when I met him, I was like, I don't know what to say. This is weird because like he probably gets this all the time, but you're the reason you're like the main reason I'm here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and yeah. So, no. Well, I'm sure he appreciates hearing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. so that was awesome. If you guys haven't yeah. listened, go check that out. Uh, Anna runs on coffee. Says that she's been keeping it to herself, but her goal was to run 100 miles this month. <laughs> then she commented that uh, that's equivalent to what Michael and Aaron run any weekend. No, <laughs> which is not true. And I had that not conversation true. with her. It's true. <laughs> I said, I don't know where we got this bad rap from. But uh, anyway, she was going to uh, reach it, but uh, just past mid month. And then she had to change her focus to writing papers for school. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. Oh, boy. But she's two miles away. And it is the 29th as we're recording this. So she should get there tonight. There you go. There you so, go. So way to go, Anna. Get it. Yay, Anna. Uh, Karate, last name, Chop, (laughs) says that his goal is to complete 60 days of yoga. He started with 30, uh, which he completed, and he's kept going. He's feeling like consistent yoga has been effective or more effective than PT and getting him back to a healthy running. Yeah, so so he said he felt good running the other day. Yeah, that's awesome. So he was able to go faster than He's been having a lot of problems with (laughs) it. Yeah, because if anything, how could he possibly go faster than what he's doing? To go I do. I think it's so funny when he's like, "My oh hamstring's my been acting up, and I can't run really fast. I'm kind of slow today." And then you look at his pace, and you're like, "He's still running like an eight minute mile. <laughs> like this is so ridiculous." <laughs> we love you, karate. What were you gonna say? No, nothing, guy. <laughs> uh dirk feel good we haven't heard from him in a while he's the one you know what he's the one i call dr feel good dr feel good (laughs) he's the one that makes it feel all right Uh, dirk feel good says that he has set up a goal to start running again he took three months off kind of by accident accident they had a baby (laughs) wow Leading up to their new baby. That's not an accident. <laughs> well, I mean, he probably meant to go out running, but then, like, you know, life, like, yeah, having a new baby I mean. happens. That's what I mean. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, um, priorities. <laughs> so he did his first run back this week, and when he was posting, he said he was aching. <laughs> so, yeah, good luck. It's always fun to restart. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Run Scott Run ran 103 miles in his first 24 hour race at the adventure trail run by the athletic uh athletic 
Adventure it, Trail run by, uh, let's see, Athletic Equation. Ath- athletic Equation, That's sorry. It, yeah. Yeah, and Prince. Uh, William Forest Park in Virginia, which is hilly because yeah, yeah. that's uh, where yeah. the um, Marine Corps seventeen seven five is, and that that's a very hilly course. Well, to put it in perspective, he holds an FKT yes. in the area, and, so yes. he's pretty good. On the Batona runner. Trail here that we always talk about, he has the out FKT and out and back. Self supported. So, out and back is a hundred mile, over a hundred miles, self supported. Yeah. Yeah, self supported. So he's fast runner. He's from South Jersey. We don't even know if he listens to this podcast, but he commented on a Mine, post. So, yeah. so what, we're gonna shout what, him out. What acronym did you just use? What do you mean? FKT. FKT. Oh, oh fastest sorry. known time. Fastest known time. Fastest, fastest known, known time. time. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So there's a lot of those. If you actually, there's a website, Fastest Known Time, uh, for all the different trails all around um, the area. Like uh, everywhere, yeah, yeah. Like Mike world. Wardian, Mike like, Wardian does a bunch. Has a, yeah. a bunch of them, uh, and then he bought a house in Delaware, so now he's trying to like find all the trails in in Rehoboth. <laughs> like Mike Wardian is just always doing stuff. Yeah, like, that should be his thing. Just. <laughs> Mike Wardian just doing stuff. Just doing like, stuff. Like, yeah, yeah. Last just week stuff. he posts like, oh, I decided that this weekend I'm going to do the CNO 100 miler. And yeah. we're like, oh, because you're in good enough shape to just decide on Tuesday that on Saturday I'm going to run a 100 miler. <laughs> anyway, Kimberly says, goal. <laughs> I kind of wanted to say that like they do when uh, someone scores a soccer goal. Yes. <laughs> Uh, I haven't accomplished the first one I sent, but I, I have until June. The other one, I have another one in the meantime to run at least three days a week every week in May. That's a good That's one. That's a really good goal. Yeah. That's yeah. a really good That's goal. That's a good, That's consistent like... thing yeah. to do. Yeah, I like that a lot. Uh, let us know how it goes. And our friend Frumpa is, sent us that he is 15% through his uh, Everest challenge. He's doing that... What twenty? It's twenty nine thousand five hundred feet of elevation. Yeah, something like that. Before June, good luck. Mid June. -June. (laughs) So is that somewhere just under five thousand feet? Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I got an extra goal getter. So Kyle from Running on Tap did his five k PR last week. Oh, yes, that's awesome. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, get it, Kyle. We haven't heard much about it yet, other than I saw that it happens on Instagram. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, but their yeah, episode yeah. that yeah, releases probably tonight. tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. We'll probably review talk that. about it. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, shout out there. Awesome. So speaking of five Ks, Diana ran one. Yeah, <laughs> she did. That's where we were going with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's where I thought you were going, and then <laughs> That's a great transition. It's <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love God. it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the middle of the week last week, and I didn't even um, plan on doing it, but uh, we have a few friends that got their puppies from um, this rescue organization, Operation Pearls for Home. Um, so our friends Hunter and Allie got their doggy Bruce, and our friend Julie got her doggy Remy and then um my friend Nicole got her Chihuahua. Oh, what is that Chihuahua's name? <laughs> I wanted to, I keep wanting to get to call the baby's name. But they, <laughs> she got her Chihuahua there. <laughs> you know, dogs, kids, it's all the same to me. Um got their dogs there. So I started following them on social media and they posted um something like this Sunday we're holding our annual Fast and Furious 5K and it was out in Frederick, and I just said, you know, let me just look and see if that's live. And and it was, so I just signed up, and we randomly went and did that Saturday. So it's something that they do annually. Huh. I didn't know about it. Um, it's usually Soul of the City weekend, oh, um, okay. which is why I may have missed it mm-hmm. in the past. Um, but it was really hilly, but it was full of doggies, and I loved that. Is it a race series by any chance? Because there is a Fast and fu- Furious or something like that somewhere around here. Um, that I I don't think it's. I think it's. It just there. happens to be coincidental. It just yeah, like they they do it themselves to raise money. So okay. it was a great event. Um, they had um 
brought a bunch of their dogs and then there was like a silent auction with like gift bags and art and that kind of stuff and like a few vendors. Um, we do this event every year, Barktoberfest, mm. uh, which is kind of similar, which is through Barks. Oh, that's um, the one I rescue- was thinking of that you guys yeah, do. Yeah, that's, that's a rescue organization in Baltimore. And we love that event. We do it every year. So I signed up for the 5K and then Tom did the one mile walk with Archie the dog. Yeah. yeah. Funny story about that. When <laughs> I completed my one mile loop um, and I crossed the finish line, this woman comes up to me with a, like a notepad and she's like, can I get your name? And I'm like, Sure. Tom and this is Archie and she's like you're the first male finisher with a dog and then I just walk away and I'm like that was weird <laughs> and, then, and then I'm like, I'm like wait a minute people are running with dogs oh yeah people were hauling I'm like people are running with, with dogs so dog. I, I was like hold on and I went back to her I'm like we just did the mile walk <laughs> oh my god I'm, and she's like okay thank you for telling me i'm like i don't want to steal someone's <laughs> oh my god that would have been amazing oh. i'm like i'm like because how, how are we the fastest people here you're a gazelle because we yeah. leisurely strolled oh my god <laughs> it goes back to mile. it goes back to that first 5k you ever ran tom a sub 30 <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I was like, I did not want to take away from anybody that's actually running with their yeah. dogs. <laughs> and funny. there were a lot of people running, like hauling butt with their dogs. Yeah. Oh my God. I got passed several times by people running with their dogs. Some of them were little dogs too. Aww. Where I was like, oh my God. Like their little legs just go so fast. Well, I just loved it. I just loved being around the dogs. Um, but there weren't even, I felt so bad for them. I'm actually glad we signed up because there weren't a ton of people there. Yeah. Like, so people just kind of ran up, like walked up. They, at this time they said, okay, the, you know, the start line's ready if, whenever people are ready to start. So I just kind of like, I went to the, to the restroom and then came out and was like, okay, I guess I'll go. And I just walked up and said, okay, I'm ready to go. And she said, go. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> That was it. It wasn't a corral situation. It wasn't anything like that. Yeah. Um, How'd you do overall? I did pretty well. I, um, I changed my intervals on my watch. So I don't think I'm at the point where I can run the full 5K yet, but I'm almost there. So I changed it where I was um, running four minutes, walking 30 seconds, and then sometimes I skipped the walk. Oh, um nice. That's pretty so I good. Did pretty well. So I think the whole 5K, I think I only ran, I don't know, maybe three minutes of it. Oh, wow. Um, you mean walked? I'm really? sorry. I only walked yeah. about three minutes of it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what I would have liked to do. That's what I usually do. Is <laughs> <laughs> run three minutes of it. Um, but yeah, I had a pretty good, I had a pretty good pace. And then I felt really good at the end. I really need to... Before I do a 5K, and I hate these people, and I make fun of these people, and warm up. I hate. I don't want to run before I run. Yeah, I just don't want to do it. But I'm so mis. Like I'm garbage. Yeah, I I totally get it. I it took me a while to get on board with that first mile warm up. Even um the the half marathon I did with Donna, I had to convince her to do a little bit of a warm up because yeah. like that, that first mile is a junk mile. It yeah, just it's is. It's not, if it's you're not so warmed up. Bad. Yeah. It's just a it's junk so mile. Bad. I was like 30 to 45 seconds slower than I was my other mile. Yeah. yeah like, just that was a not. lot. Yeah. 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 It yeah. was for three miles. Like, I don't care if it's a half marathon on my first mile. That's is garbage. Yeah. If I'm not going, if I'm not going for a PR. Yeah. If you're not. Yeah, exactly. But like here, when I was like, I was finally feeling good. And then the race was over. Yeah. Um, but it was out near Frederick. So it was super hilly. Yeah. Um, That's awesome, little... though, that you were feeling good afterwards. And if yeah. it was hilly. Yeah. And um, I thought I got there. I was a little, I was really nervous because it was just like a bunch of like fields. Like it was almost like a farm. And I was like, am I going to have to run in the grass? Because I'm not prepared. <laughs> For any of this. And there were actually like these really cute little paths yeah. that oh, were, nice. but like they had it looped around. So they didn't really close down any roads. So it was okay. kind of at this park and then the 5k like looped around weird. So you one at one point you kind of got to this fork in the road and the first time you went around, you ran past the lady. And then the second time you turned like left at the lady, like to get back. 
to to where you needed to go. Mm. But they had aid, and they had little dog bowls oh my gosh. for the I dogs can't. on the I course. I just can't. I can't. I can't and, handle it. And I think people are still weird about them about COVID. So I didn't yeah. want to like run up yeah. on people's dogs, but that's all I want to do. I know. Dogs. Michael still doesn't let me pet any dogs when we're around people. I'm st- I um, pet the dogs in the neighborhood. I want to I can't. pet all the dogs. I'm going to use COVID as an excuse for that. For the forever. rest, for yeah. the rest of his life, pretty much, so that I yeah. can't be social and talk to people <laughs> and str- well, random strangers. I don't want to get roped into conversation. <laughs> I know you. That's don't. all I want to do. That's all I want to do, though. I like it, Michael. I don't disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't like talking to people. Ugh, I just like talking to the Everyone. dog owners. <laughs> I like talking to dog owners. <laughs> I'm like, yes, I like. I'm a social person. You knew this. You know what you were getting yourself into. All right, it's you true. could buy a cute little house and fill it with balloons. <laughs> <laughs> and then if it ever gets too bad, just like I don't know. How, how does the science work? Just like let the balloons out, and, and then the house will go up. Oh, the adventure, adventure is out there. Adventure is out adventure there. Is out adventure there. is out there. So how is the uh, how'd the Orange Theory Marathon Month thing go? Oh my God! So, <laughs> oh God! Oh. Wow! Wow! That was a that strong, took a turn. strong this reaction. Is just... <laughs> that was a very strong reaction. I'm so tired. She's so tired. So first. To do this thing, you have to go to a crap ton of classes. Yeah, what do you have to do? Like there. 18 classes probably at least? It's a lot because you only get between a mile and like a mile and a half at my pace. I'm yeah. sure people get more than that, but that this is what I'm get this is what I'm giving the world is between a mile and a mile and a half every single class. And I looked at my little tracker on the app and I was like, "Cool." I'm going to get it Friday if I go every day this week, which is fine. But then I realized I did a class in Arizona and that mile and a half I got in Arizona doesn't count because it's only at your home studio. So I was like, no. And I didn't go (laughs) to Orange Theory on Sunday because I was like, I'm going to do the dog 5K. And I had signed up for a class. And so I would have gotten it today. So today... I went to Orange Theory twice. <laughs> oh my god! So, and it wasn't like one of those workouts. So sometimes when you go, this and is like I don't really want to turn, a cult. This is this... I just I don't want this to turn into an Orange Theory podcast. But let me just complain for a minute. So some days when you go, <laughs> when you're doing like some days when you go, you do like a weight workout when mm-hmm. you're on the floor which is fine. It's great. Like you stay in like the blue the whole time. It's not a lot of effort. Today's class where I had to do oh, it no. twice was tornado. Jump, it was like jump squats oh, God. and then hammer curls. <laughs> and it was like a ladder. So you did 12 jump scra- squats and then 12 hammer curls and then 10 jump squats and then hammer 12 hammer curls and then you did that down to six and then we did these like weird burpee things where you oh did kind God. of a burpee but you ended up in like a squat at the end and then you did that 12 down to six with um these like things where you laid on the floor and had your legs up like a table and then weights in your hand that you had to like alternate with your legs and you had to do that 12 times. My God. And then you had to do jumping squat or jumping lunges. And then I forget whatever it was, whatever the weight thing was. So it was like a ridiculous workout to have to do like twice, in, like twice. And like, I just don't like the problem is like, I don't know what the workout is going to be before I go. And that I think is that's, the problem it's not like not my problem like i think that's fine most days where i'm like oh this is what we're doing today that's fine but like today i was like exceedingly annoyed oh my god it. a double workout is and tough. then like it. and then the it. double workout and then it was a ladder uh no it wasn't a ladder it was just intervals on the treadmill which was fine at least it wasn't hills but the row was a ladder oh, where god. you did a hundred meters and then you got off and then you had to do i don't know like jumpy squats and then you did 
a hundred meters and then you did jumpy lunges and then you did a hundred meters and then you did these like side to side jumps and then you did 150 meters and then did the same thing over and over oh my again. God. Like it Stop was like, it. It I'm was exhausted. Like, listening. I'm so, I am, I'm so I, tired. I'm so exhausted. Just this entire thing that you just, this whole thing, I'm tired. I don't, I, I don't I even just, I don't, I, I don't like it. Like, I just. You may not like it, but you're dedicated and I'm so proud of you. It's because it's so much money. I yeah. refuse yeah, not it is. to go. Yeah. That's the motivation. Yeah. yeah. I refuse not to go. Um, can, can you please tell the story about April 20th when you went into class on April 20th? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm 420. <laughs> I'm 420. Oh, so actually. 420 <laughs> is National Squats Day. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> so at the beginning of class, the coach was like, everyone know what day it is? And I was like, 420, woo! And she's like, and everyone else in the class was like, squat day. <laughs> <laughs> and they're all like, wow, she smokes a lot. Oh, That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Squat oh or a uh, a smoker on our hands over here. I was just. <laughs> oh my god! I was dying. That was I was amazing. dying. Oh, I gosh. was just. It's too much. It's too much. And then yesterday, when I stepped off the treadmill, I kind of fell and then just kind of turned the fall and do like a sit on the edge <laughs> of the treadmill. You know, like when you fall, but like you like. Oh my gosh! Kind of on to you're a mess. So it's been a time. It's been a time for me. But week, and I had to do two a day. Tomorrow, and if I don't get my marathon. Tomorrow, I should get. If I get, what if we did? We tried to do the math. If I get, if you get a mile, you should hit it. If I get a mile, I should hit it tomorrow. Okay, and if so I don't, one more mile. Um, I'll post and say, looks like I'm signing up for an afternoon class. Oh God! Oh my God! I have to get it. I have to get it. Like. Yeah. Well, and then I'm mad at myself for all the times I went where after... I was like, well, I don't have to push myself, so I only get like a mile today. Where if I had just gotten that extra like tenth of a mile, I wouldn't be in this situation. You'll have to leave uh everyone in suspense until after this episode releases so that everyone can hear this before they know what whether you made it or not. And you'll have to announce on Monday afternoon whether you made it. Guys, my legs, I'm just sitting here. My legs, my legs are like tired and they kind of hurt. <laughs> oh my gosh. Tom, what about you? What have you been up to? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> well, I mean, you did get the. I'll, I'll, I'll blame the vaccine for a little bit, but I've been somewhat lethargic. I mean, I did have a good long run last Saturday. Um, I'll run this Saturday. But then, you know, we're going to go on vacation. I would like to run while we're on vacation, and I am packing um, because there's some good trails yeah, um, or some paths. And I've seen people post about their, you know, them running around the resort that we're going to. Yeah, well, that's zero octane that Chris, right? He posted around, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. And so, you know, I wake up early in the morning anyways. I think getting a couple, like, early morning stretch out runs might be nice but yeah i think we're gonna do sunrise yoga at alani yeah oh nice i'll be a dream but i'm going to have to really hit it hard because we have the baltimore 10 miler coming up in the beginning of june um so i'm going right into training immediately when we get back <laughs> right after. yeah well when do you, so you get back the 15th, the 15th. You said? so yeah. you have like about a month right yeah, that should be good. You've, you've stayed pretty trained. I've done a good job because I even, I, I don't know, last the last couple of weeks, whenever we recorded, I was like, I'm going to stay maintained at six miles, like every weekend at least. And I've done that. And even I felt like trash on Saturday. And I was like, I'm only going to do four. <laughs> and then when I was out there, I was like, well, I said on the podcast, I have to do six. So now you guys are holding <laughs> see, me accountable. See, there this is go. what but happens. Like, I was that. like, I can't be like, I run four. And then, well, you said you were going to run six. I, don't, I just, yeah. <laughs> like, you've been staying pretty consistent. Yeah, I just don't want to feel like trash when we actually run that race. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm going to double down when we get, have you gone back. back to, um, what is it? The, 
things or I, I, you talk about how much weight you do and I'm like, that's amazing. And you're oh, like, it's not that much squats and all that. Yeah. The, um, I, I've done a little bit of that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And you said you went swimming, right? Yeah. So you're still out there. Plus you got Archie. He keeps you motivated. I, we walk at least five miles every day with this dog. My wow. Dog's working on his summer bod. That dog wow. is going to be ready for the beach. <laughs> His so yeah, so I'm not I'm not completely sedentary, which is good for this podcast. Um, <laughs> but uh, but I do I do need to I do need to ramp it up. So how's your training going? Uh, it's going. I mean, like I think I, the reworking has helped. Uh, yeah, a hundred percent. I think it's yeah. funny that we were like, yeah, we're all in on this training plan, and then we're not anywhere near this training plan anymore. <laughs> But it's fine because I actually think what it did do is it gave us structure to yeah, start. It did. Yeah. And I think the structure was a little bit of what we needed because we were just sort to of get going yeah. all over the place. So even though it didn't work out, um, I think it gave us sort of an outline and an idea of what we're what we our goal was and where we needed to go. And then when we realized that it was a little too much, uh, we were able to readjust, but kind of still keep within that structure. Yeah. Yeah. It so, was burning you guys out a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. we had that pullback week uh, the last time we recorded. I think we talked about that. Mm -hmm. And then we did a pretty big week where we did 50 miles again. Pretty flat week, though. But we kept it. Yeah, we only did uh, one hill repeat workout. So we only did like the 1,300 feet of elevation that week. Uh, and then we did the 20-mile long run, which I think – um, considering we had, I didn't realize that we hadn't done a 20 miler since, like uh, January, January 1st. Yeah. yeah. January 1st was our last 20 miler. So all these people who think that we run like ridiculous miles on the weekend, we do not. Yeah. We used to do them all the time. We but, do not. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we just hadn't done one. So I think my goal going in, cause I knew we weren't going to be able to run all 20 miles was to do something consistent for at least 16 <laughs> And then see how I hey. felt after. Uh, and I think that's pretty much what we hit. We hit yeah. 16 miles. We ran steady for 16 miles. And then we're like, yeah. And then I, we were both getting tired. Uh, the towpath kind of turned into these like railroad rocks, which were getting annoying. So I think that wore me down towards the end. Yeah. And then, I don't know. We were just at that point, I think you're. When you have a number in your head, I think part of it, too, is that you're like, mm -hmm. if I get here, then that's all I have to do. And then you realize you're still five miles from the car and five mile walk is still really far. <laughs> yeah. Yep. yeah. Well, yeah, especially on that terrain. Like I run on flat pavement. And if there's like a stick or like a rock on the pavement, I get annoyed where I'm like, oh, like, am I going to have to like go over yeah. this or like around it? And like, or do yeah. I just lie down in front of it and die? <laughs> yeah. That's how I feel when I see like a rock on the trail. Like, uh, the yeah, path. <laughs> we were certainly feeling that way towards the end. Yeah, we were over it. But it was a, it was a good we grinded it out walked. 21 mile or whatever ran walk 21 miles ran 16 walked five yeah i mean i was pretty proud that we got the 16 consistent where we were running between like a 10 50 to like an 11 30 the whole time um it was weird because we haven't really done any flat running like that in a long yeah, time so it was very monotonous which yeah. was also weird um but yeah so we got that done and then this week we're back to a pullback week mileage wise but we decided that we're gonna kind of try and keep our um elevation steady so we're just we're we're kind of keeping it easy by today we walked the hills yeah. like we oh, didn't good. even bother trying to run them so we didn't get as many miles in to get to the thousand foot of elevation but we took it easy so you're not getting your heart rate too high you're not like mm -hmm. overexerting yourself uh, so we'll do probably one more of those workouts and then next week is our last big, big week. We've got, and what, when's the race? Well, the race is the 29th. Th yeah. Mm -hmm. Memorial day weekend. Uh, that Saturday is the 24 hour race. So we'll start ta tapering. We'll pull back probably to like 30 ish miles, then like tw 15 to 20 miles. And then nothing ish that week yeah or just like a couple shake out yeah shake out runs so next week we're planning on doing um 
probably about 50 miles again. But at the end of it, we have uh, our big goal hike run. Hike run. Probably mostly a hike because it's probably pretty technical. Uh, we're going to go do the Five Sisters in um, New York at Bear Mountain. It's five peaks. So it's 5,000 feet of elevation and 13 miles. So that awesome. that's our big wow. Yeah, that's our big last training goal. And then we'll taper. And then June will, I guess. We'll just do some, some hiking and stuff hiking in June to get ready for Grand Canyon. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys are killing it. That's awesome. So it's it's felt good to be focused again, I guess, a little. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not, I don't need structure as much as I used to, but I do like that there's a reason for me to be actually running out there again. I mean. Today was a little annoying because, like, I didn't really want to go do it because my legs are still tired. But I know that it's good for them, even if I'm just walking. It's I, it's it's got to be tough to know to to be able to understand now how what you're doing is going to pay off when you know when it when it counts. Yeah, you know, yeah. like when you're in the thick of it in your 24 hour or in you know in in the Grand Canyon, you're like. Do I feel good? <laughs> <laughs> and is it because of all of that preparation? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. I think the bigger concern is obviously the canyon just because uh, we have to get out. Yeah. <laughs> you do. Yes, you do. Yeah. So. I, you just live there and become like a like a hermit. In yeah. The I know. Yeah. I keep thinking about this and I, I, I am actually a little nervous about it and I like haven't talked a ton about that, but I. I definitely have some some anxiety about the Grand Canyon adventure. I'm very excited for it, but I do have some anxieties about I'm it. really excited to see your helicopter rescue on the news. That's <laughs> what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Oh gosh! Yes, yeah, so we... couple kills each other <laughs> climbing up the Grand Canyon. <laughs> uh, yeah, we've started prepping a little bit more for that. So yeah. we, we have our poles, trying different stuff. Um, we bought... I saw you guys out with your poles. <clears throat> yeah, we bought super lightweight poles because uh, we had like Amazon poles that were just kind of heavy and yeah, clunky. clunky. And yeah. I don't think that we realized how clunky they were until. Uh, our friend Kurt let him borrow his and we picked them up and they weigh like literally a quarter pound, if that, <laughs> like one pole. So, yeah, so we we upgraded our poles. Uh, he upgraded his vest. I'm still testing out vests. Um, you ordered seven belts. I ordered seven belts. I did. I actually ordered six belts. It's three <laughs> different belts. So they're like flip belt type style. Yeah. But um, – they hold more stuff than the flip belt. They're a little thick, like um, like thicker as in not like wider, I guess. Higher, they hold yeah. higher. Yeah. So they oh, hold yeah. more stuff. Uh, but they also hold your poles because I tried them on the vest and they, they hit my back and it's really uncomfortable. So now I have to spend some time experimenting with like ones that you can put on your uh, hips the problem is the sizing is like very vague and like I don't know and you can't go and try them on. So yeah. I bought three belts and bo- all three belts I bought in two different sizes. <laughs> so yeah. I bought six and belts try them on and, and then, spent yeah. like $270 in belts <laughs> because they're all like $40 belts. Yeah, well, and then just return what you don't use. Obviously. I'm also very proud of myself. The entire conversation, I did not say that's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> I, I resisted so hard. The Until thick. right now. Are you going to go right, right now? Right now. <laughs> it's okay. When I think you were talking about Jessica Grant. uh, Grant's thing, when she was talking about uh, the sup, and I was saying something about being on my knees. I immediately said, "That's what she said." <laughs> I uh, I thought it. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, I typed it on Facebook. There you go. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. Are you all ready? Anything else coming up? Anything uh, else? Why don't we? Uh, so, if people want to join us at the Tower Beach Run, oh yeah, we. Be Michael one. finally signed up for that. I finally signed up. Uh, which is in Delaware at Rehoboth, and it's uh, the run on the sand that we were talking about. Yeah, he's pacing. 5K, 10K, 15K. Our so friends, Vanessa and John. And so, when is that again? Give September, me, give me September 11th. 11th. That's the one you can just, just 
it's a short distance. You could do yeah, a maybe five k. Five k. We could drink some beers. We can afterwards. drink some beer after. I told you guys. Remember, yeah, just do to, we... just to support Vanessa. Like we might have to do the. And then the next weekend, rocking the knob. Uh, I guess it's us and Balta Amor Han is there. Yeah, going to be there. Yeah, I think we talked about that. And Space Ghost. Yeah, Sp- Space Ghost is going to be incredible. Fortieth birthday. That's going to be fun. And don't forget Shamrock. Everyone, oh yeah, we Shamrock. Sh- next we, it's year. not on our list, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Shamrock's going to be a big one. Yeah. Did you guys sign up for anything else? Between. Um, no, I mean no. they still haven't announced if the 10 miler is happening the june and it's one taking place in a month yeah so oh God. i don't know um the baltimore mayor he said i think he's doing a, a good job he's just being very very conservative when it comes to covid restrictions yeah so even when like all the counties were opening stuff he wasn't and yeah, yeah. Um, so he's been doing like i think a good job with all of that but he's been very um, conservative about like events and races and things like that. People are even starting to get worried about uh, the Baltimore Running Festival. Well, um, I will say, and if he'll let that happen, New York City just announced today that they are they're planning. Uh, they are foreseeing full reopenings by July first. So I don't know. I mean, June might be a little soon, but yeah, for sure, July, right? Yeah, and our Frederick. We know, got moved to July, yeah, so. we know Frederick's still going on. My swim in June is still going on. Mm. That's in a lake, so yeah. 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 But um past past Frederick, we don't really know what's actually happening. So we're just crossing our fingers. Yeah. Signing up for that fifty K anytime so- soon, Tom. <laughs> what now? <laughs> The fifty k that uh, we uh, chatted about. When's uh, when's that getting put on the calendar? I think you're talking on mute. <laughs> <laughs> like I can see her talking, but the training... it's just it's just nonsense coming out. The training run for the uh, dopey in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all uh... it is. That's all it is. That's going to come up. Like, Quick. I was like, Tom, yeah. you realize next year is when we're going to have to start training for Dopey. Yeah. yeah. And he yeah. had like a panic attack. <laughs> oh, yeah. I yeah, mean, like, technically. It'll be like next, yeah. like, July, August, we'll be training That's for Dopey. That's true. Mm-hmm. That is true. Yep. So you may as well get So you might as well just get the 50K out of your, yeah. out of the way and get used to that training. Oh, is that, is that logic? Is that how it works? <laughs> That's yes. what we, that's how we do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I've heard how you do it. Um, <laughs> I mean, at the time we last shot about this, it wasn't off the table. It's it, not off the table. <laughs> We're heading the summer though, so it's it's on the edge of the table. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> it is it is getting to the edge of the table. Oh gosh. That's what we've got coming up. Guys, let us know what you guys have coming up. Mm-hmm. And then uh, come join us at some of the events we've got going on. And when Diana and Tom start fa- signing up for more fall stuff, we'll... Yeah. Well, I mean, we're registered for like our normal fall stuff. So, I mean, Space Coast is in the fall. Um, Baltimore um, half yep. is in the fall. Uh, we usually do Barktoberfest, which is just like a 5K, but it's like my favorite race all year. Um, Oktoberfest five miler. Yep. I always do every year. I'm signed up for that. So am I. Um, we are signed up for a four miler on um, July fourth. Oh, nice. Day, cool. Four miler. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just yeah. Uh, signed up to volunteer at uh, the Haynesport hundred. If anyone feels like running a hundred miles, uh, Vanessa B spacing. We wanted to give back well, a little bit. That's on July fourth, right? Yeah, that's July third to July the fourth. July fourth, yeah. Yeah, so we just signed up to volunteer for that weekend. Yes, yeah, so we're so, working an aid station or something, probably. Yeah, it's a, a mile. I'm, it's literally a mile loop course, so it's only one aid station. <laughs> yeah, for a couple hours that night. Yeah, we're going to do like the five to nine shift. Yep. So nice. hopefully nice. help motivate some people to keep moving. You know me, I'm very chipper and oh, talkative. And... It's a joy to be around. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love talking to people. Yeah. So we're doing that. Yeah. We should find a race for sure for all four of us besides Space Coast to do and see whether or not we can get some people to join. I still want to do a Philly run. Something that's not like as travel-y for, you know, all of us. I mean, obviously Space Coast is a destination race, but maybe we we find some locals around here because we got some local listeners. 
We'll have to look at September. I don't think we can do it because I think we literally have a race every weekend in September. But I just realized yeah. that. <laughs> Never mind. Good luck with that. <laughs> Good luck scheduling September, October. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's going to fill up really fast. It especially is. Especially because everything from the spring is probably getting moved to the fall. That is true. It's true. And I feel like we already have most of September booked. And then we have uh, Mark and Megan's wedding in October. Oh, yeah. So, like, I feel like half of our, I feel like our fall is very full. And it's yeah. not fall even, very full. and it's not even May. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, anyway. You guys ready? Sure. I'm ready. I'm ready. I, I don't think. know. Diana's smiles making me nervous. I, yeah, I I'm did concerned. my homework. Yeah, I'm <laughs> very concerned about what's coming. I did my homework for Diana's random trivia featuring Diana and the Diana players. <laughs> it's, it's the greatest thing ever. Oh my god. <laughs> this week's edition is finally happening. Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney? Oh, oh my god, god. that's amazing! <laughs> yes. Stop it. And I didn't tell you because I didn't want you guys to study. Oh my god, that's so good! <laughs> you joked that you were going to do this, and I—oh my I, god! I couldn't so tell whether you were serious. <laughs> and how I wrote the questions are just out of control. <laughs> oh god! Oh, amazing! All right. So, how I'm going to do this is I have questions for each of you. Um, rather than everyone jumping in and guessing. So I have them organized on my, on my little sheet by color, but that's not going to mean anything to you. I'm just <laughs> telling how I've organized myself, um, uh... that I've actually done work for this. Okay. <laughs> that's amazing. All right. So the goal here is to let me know if it's Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney. Oh my God. <laughs> that's oh my amazing. God. All right, this one is for Michael. I can't even get it out. <laughs> <laughs> Just breathe. In Three to Tango, a rich businessman's assumption that his new colleague is gay leads him to ask the man to keep an eye on his mistress. Oh, my God. Who, star who stars alongside Nev Campbell in Matthew Perry in this film? Is it Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney? Oh, man. <laughs> Trita Tango. I kind of know what this movie is. Like, I, I remember the existence <laughs> of it. Uh, I'm going to say that one is Dylan McDermott. You are correct. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. Am I an expert on the McDermott <laughs> McRoney? Or oh, whatever my God. Dumbledore McRoney? Whatever his name is. Dumbledore McRoney. <laughs> Dumbledore <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. All right. Tom. Yes. Diana was really emo as a teenager, so this book was a huge deal. <laughs> Which actor was in the movie adaptation of The Perks of Being a Wallflower? Oh. <laughs> Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney? God. It's um, a good movie. <laughs> I'm going to also say Dylan McDermott. You are correct. It's oh. Dylan McDermott. Wow. Two for two. Two for two. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm a I jinx. I'm going to be the jinx. <laughs> All right. Aaron. Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen are acting brothers who have both aged terribly. <laughs> <laughs> who plays Dirty Steve Stevens in Young Guns? Who am I? Who are my choices? <laughs> Dylan McDermott. Dermot, Dermot, Dylan McDermott Dermot, or Dermot, Dermot Maroney. Maroney. Yeah, we'll go with him. Dermot You're Maroney? Right. Yeah. Dermot it's Maroney? Yes, I said Dermot Maroney. <laughs> Dumbledore McRooney. It is Dermot Mulroney. You are correct. Yes. Oh, my God. I, I knew that one. Uh, McRooney. Yeah, I mean, I just am going to say their names wrong on purpose forever. He's, he's unrecognizable in that movie. Oh, God. All right. Michael. Oh, no. <laughs> You at home can't see this, but Diana is losing her mind. I can't get it out. All right. The 1994 remake of Miracle on 34th Street stars Ben Shapiro's cousin, Mara Wilson. <laughs> Who plays Brian Bedford? <laughs> oh, my God. What does that have to do with 
do with <laughs> the fact that he, she just wanted to say Ben Shapiro's name. Oh, my God. <laughs> I think it's Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> it's Dylan McDermott. Oh, was it? Oh. Uh, I remember right. that one, actually, that movie. The uh, remake? Uh, yeah, I do the not. Remake. Oh, I love the remake. I like it almost as much as the original. All right, Tom. Yep. Amy Adams is dreaming of true love's kiss from this hunky single dad in the Disney classic Enchanted, mm. even though James Marsden was way hotter. This has got to be a trick question because I'm picturing the guy who plays Mc... I'm, I'm picturing Dreamy? Patrick Dempsey. Yeah, you are. Oh, yeah. I know what you're saying, but yeah. It, is it not Patrick Dempsey? You are correct. It was a trick question. I it's knew Patrick it. Patrick Dempsey. <laughs> I knew it. That's hilarious because I was thinking to myself, I didn't remember either of them being in this movie, but I definitely remember uh, Patrick Dempsey. She's tricky. They're they're interchangeable. Oh my you can't God. tell these white men apart. They're all the same person. It's all they're all the same person. It's all Ben Savage in makeup. Oh it's all... <laughs> I can't believe you got that right. <laughs> That was a good one. That was a good one. Oh, goodness. All right. Aaron really loves dogs. Must Love Dogs is a romantic comedy starring Diane Lane, who was in Unfaithful, and John Cusack, who was in Say Anything. Who plays Bob in Must Love Dogs? (laughs) She really put effort into this (laughs) trivia. I'll tell you that. I spent a lot of time on this trivia. Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney? Dylan? It was Dermot uh, Mulroney. Yeah, I think mm. I knew that one. I did not. I couldn't even. I could picture John Cusack in it, but I couldn't picture anyone else. Any other men? I think he's the, um, he's one of the suitors. Mm. Okay. All right, Michael. This is real. <laughs> in the movie Staying Together... He played a character named Kit McDermott. Was oh it God. Dermot Mulroney or Dylan McDermott? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I'm going to say it was Dermot Mulroney. This is the most ridiculous thing that's ever happened. It was Dermot Mulroney. <laughs> All right. Oh, I can't with this. I can't. <laughs> There's a lot. Everyone gets four. <laughs> All right. Tom. Yes. Cameron Mannheim is mother to zombies actor in National Treasure, Milo Mannheim. Oh, I love him. Who starred alongside Cameron in the 90s TV sensation, The Practice? That's- Dylan McDermott or Dermot Mulroney? I can picture that actually. Oh, this I know because I watched I'm old. it. I think it's Dylan McDermott. You are correct. Yeah. It's Dylan McDermott. I could I can picture that. I used to watch the practice, so that one I knew. All right. Aaron. Both actors played love interests in movies with the actress known as America's Sweetheart. Hmm. Who is America's Sweetheart? Oh. Rose McGowan. D- well, Dermot, Dur- whatever. Dumbledore McRoney. <laughs> he was in my be- He was the one in my best friend's wedding, right? So it would have to be Dylan. No, who's no. America's sweetheart? Oh, who's? Oh, you're asking Julie Roberts? Yes, it's Julia Roberts. Oh. <laughs> so you were right. My best friend's wedding was Julia Roberts, and fun fact: Dylan McDermott. Wasn't Steel Magnolias. Okay. Oh, I didn't know Okay. That. I was trying to Drink think... the juice, Shelby. <laughs> the I was trying juice. to think of, like, if America's, um, like, that if that was the name of a movie, I wouldn't even be surprised if Julia Roberts starred in a movie called that. Because yeah, well, that's a good point. Just, I think yeah. she like... wasn't a movie. Was, yeah. Wasn't she in that movie? And it was... Oh, no. Yes, that was right. John Cusack and Catherine Zeta-Jones, yeah. right? I think so. For an America's <laughs> Sweetheart? Oh, Okay. I think so. See that name the name of that movie sounded familiar, but I knew we were talking about Julia Roberts. <laughs> yes. It's very confusing. <laughs> this this question is um for Michael oh, and I no. might get yelled at for it. Oh, oh no. gosh. 
J. Edgar Hoover was human garbage. In 2011, <laughs> fellow trash bag Clint Eastwood made a film about him starring Leonardo DiCaprio and known cannibal Army Hammer. Who played <laughs> Colonel Schwarzkopf? <laughs> Dylan McDermott or German Oh Bill my Bradley. God. <laughs> There's a lot in that question. There, we have to unpack a lot. Oh there. my God. We don't have time to unpack all that, though. <laughs> uh. Dill McDermott? It was Dermot Mulroney. Mulroney. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow. I never saw uh, that. I never saw uh, Hoover or whatever it was called. Oh, uh, God. Tom. Yes. We've been rewatching New Girl. Who plays Russell? Have we met Russell yet? Yes. Oh, God. I don't know. <laughs> I got to go with Dylan. It was no, Dermot Mulroney. Dermot. Yeah, that one I oh, knew. Oh, he was on that one. Yeah. Wasn't he? Mm-hmm. yeah. He dated the Jess school, for a few seasons. From the school, and, right? Oh, yeah, that's the, the school. Older, yes. He's yeah, the yeah. older he's the per, school. guy, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Nick was like in love with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I remember. Okay. He had the wood office that made him feel manly. Last question. Everyone watched the limited series Hollywood in quarantine this year. However, we all consume so much media. You actually forgot this was a thing until the moment I asked this question. Who played the nefarious gas station owner in the limited series Hollywood? That's the one with um, the guy from Glee, right? Yes, it Dar- is. Darren Chris. <laughs> Darren yes. Chris. Thanks. We watched so much TV. Did anyone remember that show existed? I don't remember this <laughs> until at all. you just said it right now. Yes, <laughs> as you just said it in the <laughs> in this. Did we end up watching that? I don't we even never, remember. We never actually got around. I to actually watching don't it. know if we got around to that it one. It was like the old Hollywood one. I'm yeah. gonna go with yes, uh, yes. Dylan, though. I'm gonna go with Dylan. I think that's it. A was good guess. Dylan? Yeah. We liked, we liked it too, didn't we? We did like. Yeah, I heard, I heard it was good. Yeah, yeah, we just never. I I don't. I think you guys even talked about it yeah. with us, and I just don't I, know. If I think we did. We ever made it there? Oh my gosh, it's so funny. Oh gosh. All right. Um, I'm just looking. We have a tie between Tom and Aaron. Wow. Ooh. Michael got two. Both of you guys got three. Nice. Nice. Thanks for playing, Dylan McDermott. Or Jar McMillroney. <laughs> or Patrick Dennis. Because <laughs> he got Dempsey. the trick question right. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> he got your trick question. That was amazing. That was amazing. That was fun. Good job. Very good job. Oh, God. Oh, gosh. Who wants to go first? Uh, Tell me something good. Dylan McDermott is good. <laughs> he is good. Dumbledore McRooney is amazing. Oh. Dumbledore McRooney. I bet people were just yelling at their phones while they were listening to that. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, I mean, I guess I'll start. I mean, not, mine's uh, a podcast that uh, has been out for a little while, but I I missed a bunch of episodes and I've been back binging it. It's called Maintenance Phase. It's uh has Michael from the other podcast that I listen to and talk about sometimes the you're wrong about um, one of the co-hosts from that is on this one uh, with his co-host Aubrey and they debunk um, a lot of things having to do with the diet culture and yeah. um, fat phobia and it's just a really well done uh, health podcast and it talks a lot about uh the discrimination that overweight people incur and it also then debunks things like um i don't know like uh i'm trying to think of an episode like it talks about uh like dr oz and his like snake oil type things Mm -hmm. and like you know those kinds of things and debunks a lot of the, the the science behind junk diet phases and things that you do in order to make yourself healthy and it pulls them apart and teaches you why it's not really science (laughs) and so i I find it really interesting and uh it's just more so um talks about the culture that we we live in um i think greg actually posted something about bmi this past week Mm -hmm. and it was one of those things that i i said you know i remember being at a gym once and I wasn't that heavy and a guy told me that I was on the verge of being obese and I was like 135 pounds and I was like this is why women hate themselves and yeah. I think that they do a really good job about talking about that mm-hmm. and uh, it's just really interesting so if you're interested in debunking all the things that you grew up in the American culture learning about <laughs> uh, diets and fitness it's a it's a good podcast 
Including Ed McMahon's diet. Yes. <laughs> this past week, <laughs> this past week's episode was on uh, Ed McMahon's cookbook and diet uh, book from book like the had. early eighties or seventies or whatever. I have questions, and I'm just going to unpack that later. the The interesting part about it was like when you first start listening to some of the stuff that's like talks about older issues or things that happened in the eighties, nineties, or whenever. You're like, this really doesn't have tie into today but it really does because it tells you teaches you or explains to you how we ended up where we are today in our culture and society and how we feel <clears throat> about fat people yeah. yeah did um they haven't they haven't come from my girl jane fonda yet have they they need to leave her alone i need to do a leave jane fonda video oh gosh no <laughs> not they have not I don't she, was, think a, so she yet. was a workout she was never a diet yeah no they haven't they ha- it's mostly all diet kind of stuff yeah so they haven't like, they and, haven't gotten gone after yeah, that like they, the, they went after biggest loser <laughs> yeah well for good reasons yeah. Yeah, yeah um yeah, yeah. But other than that, outside of that fitness type thing, they haven't really gone um, into. Yeah, it's no. more about like um, they did an episode on Olestra. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's really interesting. Anyway, go ahead and listen to it. It's fun. Cool, yeah. cool. And I guess I'll go next. Um, and this is uh, this is my um, something good actually from last week before I spoiled everyone with Sebastian Stan's butt, um, <laughs> but. Uh, Taylor Swift re-released her Fearless album, and I just wanted to just shout her out for a minute because that album is so freaking good, and I've been listening to it nonstop, and I was listening to it on the treadmill, and I'm going to admit, like, I went through this weird, I don't know, when I was in college and I guess, like, kind of in high school, um, that I think a lot of women went through this, like, hating other women phase like where you weren't lifting other women up, you were pulling them down and it was totally, you know, an insecurity thing. And I remember just crapping on Taylor Swift. And then in the last like couple of years, I've just fallen in love with her. Mm. Um, And I'm just so proud of her and this album. So she's re-releasing it because um, what happened, Tom? Like they basically stole the rights to her album. Yeah. Like they 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 got bought out from her. Yeah. So yeah, she they doesn't outbid have, her on purpose. Yeah. So she doesn't have rights to her own music anymore. Yeah. Um, so now she's just re-recording all of her albums. And she started with Fearless and the songs sound fantastic and she sounds great. And I'm loving it. I agree. And that they really didn't expect her to do that because they're like, Oh, she's older now, they're not gonna sound the same. It's blah 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 blah. And uh Stick it to the man, Taylor. Yeah, mm-hmm. stick it to the man. Like she is just like a sneaky, yep, amazing feminist. She's yeah. so I don't know. She's just so great. Um, and I'm like regretting all of these years. I was so Taylor, and I just I love her. She released some really awesome stuff over the pandemic too. She oh my went God. Uh, kind of back to her roots and went to, into some of the folks kind of stuff, and yeah, it was great. just beautiful and gorgeous. And I have always been a Tay Tay fan. Along those lines, my something good <laughs> is, a, is a little bit of nostalgia. Um, it is the movie. Was this Netflix or Hulu? HBO, HBO Max. Max. HBO Max. It was yeah. like supposed to be a real movie. Yeah. Like a yeah. Netflix yeah. Movie. So it was neither of what I just said, but <laughs> yeah. HBO Max, Mortal Kombat. Exactly Jeez. like Taylor Swift. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. So. Obviously, I grew up with the video game, and there's a healthy bit of nostalgia throughout the movie. It's uber violent. It's just good, that, yeah. wholesome, <laughs> nostalgic video game <laughs> fun. I never played. This is going to shock everyone. Um, I, I didn't play video games. Um, I'm sure people are like, what? <laughs> she video games we'll pause but for to, we'll just oh pause for you guys to just pick yourself off the floor um i had lots of questions while we were watching it but i did i did like it i thought i was gonna hate it um and i liked it but i didn't understand like who was the bad guy and who was the good guy and who i was supposed to like and I had lots of questions. Is that the end of the day? <laughs> it's kind of what it was. Oh, like, why man. is he doing that? And where are they? Yeah, check it out. It's, yeah, it's I, a, I enjoyed it. It's over the top. It's ridiculous. It was very entertaining. Yeah, it was very campy. I like that. Yeah, I think, it, I, I think it sets up for sequels and, you know, to do more in that universe. So 
Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of HBO Max, uh, what's her name from Kate Titanic? Winslet? Kate Winslet. I couldn't remember her name. Apologies, Kate. Um, my favorite human. Yeah. I'm obsessed. Kate, oh, if you're out go there. on, go she, on. She does. There, uh, she does great hoagie mouth. In, uh, <laughs> I was waiting for you to say that exact word. In Mayor of East Town, or Mayor, not Mayor. She's not the mayor of the town. Yes, I actually got confused the first her time. Her name is Mayor, M A R E. Yeah. When they first used her name, I was like, wait, is yeah. she the mayor? She's not the mayor. She's not. She's a detective. Yeah. And she's in uh, Delco, PA, as uh, I'm not sure how many people who listen would know what that is Delaware County. It's uh, a place, and it's represented interestingly in this show. It's and represented everybody, pretty accurately. <laughs> every, everybody sounds like my relatives. Uh, <laughs> and if, uh, if Danielle listens to this podcast uh, from Team Shenanigans, uh, shout me out because she'll know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, maybe Frumpa has some hoagie mouth. I'm not sure. I don't recall. It's been a while since we've seen people. But, uh, yeah, some... A lot of hoagie mouth in Mayor of East Town, but it's real good. Uh, we watch it's like uh, I think it's the current HBO Sunday Night Show, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. So it, it's pretty good. Uh, we saw the first two episodes, really good, like slow oh, burn kind of thing. Yeah, definitely check it out. Yeah, we're gonna watch. I love her. All right, so so Tom, you um you reached out to to our listeners. Oh God! And right. ask them I did. how you were supposed to end the show. Did you get get any suggestions? Got some suggestions. So this is Tom. I'm sorry. So for Aaron, Michael, and Diana, <laughs> this is Tom. And go f- yourself. We'll run more. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! That's good. Bye. Bye. <laughs> oh God. I can't wait for Anna to hear that. (laughs) I'm starting trouble. He is. Sorry. He's going to have to, whatever, edit. God, he keeps like using his foot against my leg and it's tickling me and it's annoying the (laughs) shit out of me. I thought you were putting your hand up her butt. That's honestly what I thought was happening because I can't see your hand. Like a a puppet. His hands are right right there.